Developing a thermal protection system for rocket re-entry is essentially very difficult. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk emphasized that a super reliable, light, reusable heat shield is the biggest technical challenge remaining for Starship. To overcome the obstacle, SpaceX has to go step by step and everything has been kicked off from this place. The nose cone with the new tiles is on. At a glance, the new ones are the same as the old ones. Yeah, the same shape and being arranged in the same pattern. However, the upgrade is about the type of adhesive to attach them to the vehicle's body. Why can I say that? Although there is no information, as far as I know, about what kind of new glue has already been installed there, we can see clearly that the team has switched from the blue tile adhesive to the new red one. In addition to the glue, SpaceX also uses metal pins. Normally, the heat tiles that are attached via metal pins have the standard size and are thinner. The thick ones from the leading wing edges and nose cone are attached with glue. Both serve different functions, with some being thinner for weight reduction and others thicker for added insulation. Beneath the thinner tiles, there is a white ceramic mat that provides additional insulation and helps minimize heat transfer to the hull. For the area using glue, you cannot find any white ceramic mats in there because they need a direct bond to the ship's body to stay in place. If the mat were glued directly onto the ship's surface, it would not hold the tile securely. So why doesn't SpaceX come to an agreement to use only glue or metal pins on the whole Starship rocket? It sounds like they like the combination. As we know, The nose cone and leading wing edges of the Starship rocket play crucial roles in its aerodynamics, thermal protection, and overall performance during atmospheric entry and flight. The use of metal pins in these areas could disrupt the aerodynamic profile of the spacecraft, leading to increased drag during atmospheric entry. Adhesive bonds create a smoother surface, minimizing aerodynamic disturbances and optimizing the spacecraft's performance during re-entry. Additionally, the adhesive helps distribute heat more evenly across the surface of the heat shield tiles, enhancing their thermal protection capabilities during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. It also helps prevent hot gases from penetrating between the tiles and the spacecraft's structure, reducing the risk of heat damage. But is there any reason not to use glue on the entire prototype? Applying glue to the entire front surface of the ship would be time-consuming, affect serviceability due to cracking and require more fuel to run the cooling system, which would increase the spacecraft's mass. Although Starship's TPS is highly estimated by its advanced technology as usual, SpaceX still has to face the matter of the connection between Starbrick and the vehicle's body. Talking about this, one hypothesis is given as follows. SpaceX modeled their heat shield tiles after the highly porous space shuttle tiles, originally developed in the early 70s. They were a space-age material at the time but were problematic even back then. Attaching them securely had been very difficult since the early days of the space shuttle program. They are so porous and low density that they can carry little load. Bolting them onto the vehicle is out of the question. Even worse is the SpaceX approach using smooth pins. NASA used epoxy-like silicone adhesive impregnated in a soft, squishy felt layer between the undersurface of the tiles and the vehicle's fuselage. This clever approach was aimed at maximizing the surface area of attachment of each individual tile. Hundreds of shuttle tiles still fell off after each mission, mostly after re-entry. Fortunately, they were mostly missing in the aft of the vehicle where they had the least adverse effect. It appears SpaceX relies on metal pins, resulting in a much smaller relative surface area coming in contact with the tiles. Poking holes in the back of the tiles to accommodate the pins doesn't help them maintain strength. So how about you? Do you think the use of pins on Starship's TPs is a bad idea? Let me know in the comment section below. No matter what challenges the Starship team faces to perfect the thermal protection system, it's hard to deny the truth that Starship's TPS has an inheritance of the great advantages of NASA's technology in the shuttle era and also improves its drawbacks excellently. Starship is designed to be rapidly reusable meaning it lands, has quick inspection, is put back on top of the launch vehicle, and heads straight back to space. Apparently, you can't afford and fix the whole TPS every time, so a very reliable insulating type heat shield is compulsory. And the closest thing we have seen is the heat tiles on the space shuttle.
The heat shield tiles on both vehicles are black, even though white or some reflective coating helps reflect the heat rather than black, which is more likely to absorb it. The reason for this is very simple. If the bulk of the heat was coming from visual spectrum light, they would likely use a white tile. But the light from the sun is not a concern for that area of the spacecraft. The primary concern is about the heat from the plasma shockwave formed by slamming into the air at hypersonic speeds. The temperature below the spacecraft during re-entry can reach 2300 Fahrenheit, 1260 degrees Celsius. What you see when you look at the black tiles on the Space Shuttle Orbiter are not really black tiles, but tiles coated in borosilicate glass. Borosilicate glass has a very low coefficient of thermal expansion. The white tiles are in areas not subject to as much heating during entry, and they are white because they provide the best thermal properties on orbit. Anyway, NASA's shuttle had a pretty bad reputation related to its TPs like it's hard to bond it to the hull, and some of them came free during launch. The space shuttle was supposed to be rapidly reusable, but as NASA discovered, the thermal protection tiles, among other systems, needed significantly more in-depth checkouts between flights. The damaged heat shield even caused catastrophic for NASA. This left many lessons for the next generation, including SpaceX Starship and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. How will Starship avoid the follies that the Space Shuttle suffered from in regards to its thermal protection tiles? The Space Shuttle was mounted on the side of the external tank, and that tank had flecks of foam and ice, and those would fall off and strike the fragile heat shield tiles on the underside of the orbiter, posing a risk to the safety of the mission. SpaceX does not have this problem with Starship because the upper stage sits on top of the lower stage. The shuttle's complex structure requires many different thermal tile shapes, making the replacement process more time-consuming, expensive, and labor-intensive. As I said, Starship just has two popular kinds of Starbrick thinner and thicker ones. Furthermore, Elon Musk made a revolution in Starship's materials by switching from carbon fiber to stainless steel. In terms of technical benefit, the stainless steel construction should be less vulnerable to small gaps between tiles, which should allow wider tolerances for installation and inspection and less susceptibility to minor damage. With the Space Shuttle's aluminum airframe, excessive heating can cause rapid and catastrophic melting of the structure. Stainless steel, in contrast, maintains its strength up to much higher temperatures. That's absolutely a good point because the entire structure will be more resilient to heating and may be able to tolerate a heat shield in less than perfect conditions. Another reason is the cost. Stainless steel was chosen because it is less expensive than carbon fiber and allows for easier production and design modification of prototypes. Flight 4's primary focus appears to be on Starship's re-entry, with Ship 29 tasked with surviving this critical phase. Perfection in the thermal protection system is paramount to ensure its success. While the loss of a few heat shield tiles on Ship 28 during Flight 3 may not have raised significant alarms for some, Ship 29's static fire test in March highlighted the urgent need for thermal protection system upgrades before Flight 4. During the test, a substantial number of heat tiles were either damaged or completely dislodged. A common occurrence due to the vibrations transferred from the pad to the vehicle, exacerbated by shock waves bouncing off the ground. The most pronounced damage was observed around the aft section, which experiences heightened vibration compared to other areas. In flight, the challenges expand beyond the aft section, as a wide swath of the ship's hull will encounter the intense heat generated by the plasma shock wave upon re-entry. Temperatures beneath the spacecraft during this phase can soar to 2300 Fahrenheit, or 1000 260 degrees Celsius. To address concerns surrounding the thermal protection system, SpaceX has embarked on a revolutionary upgrade. Recent camera footage captured images of the new heat tiles on the Ship 29 nose cone, noticeably larger than their predecessors. Upon closer inspection, the area where the star brick tiles were previously situated appears to have been scraped, possibly to remove any residual material. Now the question arises, what will these new heat tiles look like, and are there any improvements in the attachment method of the bricks. Let's explore some hypotheses to uncover the answers. Regarding the heat shield, it's plausible that the issue arises from the vibration causing the heat tiles to collide at their margin.
margins, leading to cracks and eventual detachment. To address this, increasing the gaps between the tiles beyond the range of vibration movement could be beneficial. This adjustment may necessitate a change in the tile's form, making them more outwardly protruded, such as pyramid-shaped, for example. By increasing the height of the tiles, the plasma flow could be disturbed further away from the body of the ship, potentially minimizing damage. Additionally, the increased roughness of the surface could aid in hydrodynamic optimization, similar to the rough skin of sharks. Flow simulations could be employed to calculate the optimal roughness height for enhanced aerodynamic performance. On one hand, some suggest that reducing the size of the tiles could potentially resolve the heat tile problem. This approach acknowledges the challenges posed by blast sound wave reflectivity and transferred vibrations from test and launch stands. Smaller tiles, especially over seams in the vehicle, may alleviate vibrational issues at these critical joints. Additionally, integrating transpiration cooling into the system could offer further solutions. On the other hand, there is speculation regarding the attachment pins potentially causing tile cracking under pressure. The sharpness of these pins and the compressibility of the insulation beneath the tile raise concerns. While there is an insert within the tile body, questions arise regarding whether it provides sufficient surface area to spread the load adequately. If personal opinions amount to anything, the focus should shift towards upgrading the attachment process rather than the tiles themselves, as they appear to be structurally sound. Addressing issues with the attachment mechanism could potentially offer a more effective solution to the challenges faced with the thermal protection system. Based on observations from individuals collecting the heat shield remnants on the beach after Fly 3, many of them were found to be fully intact. The use of three fastener pins to secure each tile to the orbiter provides a robust attachment mechanism. These pins, welded to the orbiter's skin, are designed to withstand significant stress and are unlikely to break off easily. Despite initial suspicions that the attachment point of the pin to the tile may be the weak point, further examination reveals otherwise. Upon inspecting the back of intact tiles, the anchors are found to be neatly in place with no signs of damage. This suggests that the failure mechanism may not be attributed to the pins or anchors themselves. Instead, the cause of tile fracture or anchor detachment under load remains elusive and requires deeper investigation to identify and address the underlying issue effectively. The intact state of the bricks contradicts the notion that they were fragile and would have shattered under the vibrations of launch or aerodynamic loading. Similarly, the fact that the dowel pins are not found attached to the tiles suggests that they did not fall out of the skin as would be expected if the pin welds failed. Moreover, if the load were sufficient to tear the pin welds from the orbiter, it would likely have caused damage to the bricks or failure of the anchors in previous instances. The resilience of the fastener clip further complicates the issue, as it is typically challenging to remove and requires specialized tools and techniques. These observations suggest that some form of unusual vibrational mode may be at play, potentially leading to the dislodging of the fastener clip. Further investigations into the specific nature and origin of these vibrations is essential to understanding and addressing the issue effectively. The expansion and contraction of propellant tanks present significant challenges for maintaining tile attachment. When the spaceship contracts during fueling, the tiles may exert a considerable force on each other, potentially causing them to lift away from the pins. Additionally, weather factors cannot be overlooked. The installation of these tiles typically occurs during the day when sunlight heats the steel body of the ship and everything expands, including the dark painted heat absorbing tiles. However, at night, the steel skin contracts more than the tiles which retain heat for longer periods. This temperature differential could result in the warping of the steel skin and strong pulling forces from the tiles, possibly loosening them from the connectors during prolonged exposure on the pad. These factors highlight the complex interplay of thermodynamics and mechanical forces that must be considered when addressing tile attachment issues. Developing solutions to mitigate the impact of expansion and contraction on tile integrity will be crucial for ensuring the success of future missions. The temperature difference between the top and base of the ship, exacerbated by its considerable height, could indeed contribute to warping issues. Consequently, the loosening of tiles may occur while the ship is stationed on the pad, even during the construction phase. As the ship undergoes assembly and preparation, many tiles might simply rest on each other without being securely connected to the ship's surface. This scenario presents a concerning possibility wherein a significant number of tiles
files may not be properly attached by the time of launch. Addressing this challenge will require meticulous attention to detail during the construction and installation processes, ensuring that all tiles are securely affixed to the ship to withstand the rigors of launch and flight. Efforts to optimize tile management, tile attachment methods, and mitigate the effects of temperature differentials will be essential to enhance the overall integrity and reliability of the thermal protection system. If the incident involving the fall of the heat shield during Starship's test flight was unintended by SpaceX, it has inadvertently become a blessing for collectors and space enthusiasts. The charcoal black hexagonal ceramic heat shielding tiles are integral to SpaceX's technology, crucial for enabling the Starship spacecraft to withstand the extreme temperatures encountered during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Now, these tiles have transcended their role as mere components of spacecraft technology. They have become objects of scientific interest and aspiration for collectors and space fans alike. This unexpected turn of events has elevated the significance of these tiles, adding a new dimension to their value and appeal beyond their original engineering purpose. After Flight 3, the heat shield tiles that separated from Starship were discovered and found their way onto eBay, where they fetched prices in the thousands of dollars. The pursuit and sale of these Starbrick collectors have emerged as a lucrative new niche in the secondary market for unique souvenirs, offering enthusiasts the opportunity to own a piece of one of mankind's most ambitious spacecraft endeavors. Numerous enthusiasts have embarked on searches along the beaches of the southern United States and Mexico, uncovering valuable artifacts in the process. Renowned relic hunter Ron Parker, for instance, has already amassed an impressive collection of 120 tiles near SpaceX's test center in Boca Chica. Others continue to unearth separated fragments from Starship dating back to its first failed launch attempt last year. Owners of these prized artifacts have opted to capitalize on their finds by listing them for sale on platforms like eBay and other online sites, with prices ranging from $30 to over $2,000. Tiles in well-preserved condition command even higher prices, with some fetching as much as $7,500. This burgeoning market underscores the enduring fascination and value associated with space exploration endeavors. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Otherwise, thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.